with such an awesome God, how could we not come boldly to his throne to obtain mercy, to find grace, to help in time of need? Mercy, grace, and help. What an awesome God that the invitation is wide open. Come boldly to the throne in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Spirit. Come boldly to the throne to obtain mercy, to find grace, to help in time of need. Father, we thank you for you're such an awesome God. You, the invitation is always open. There's no time in the Spirit. We can come at any time of day, any time of night, any time we need, any time we're in trouble. We can come boldly to the throne to obtain mercy, to find grace, to help in time of need. We say this in Jesus' name. And anyone who agreed said? Amen. 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 God bless you all for being here. And what an all-star band. Wow. That was Craig Dion on drums. That was Bob on the bass. That's David on the sax. Toddy Todd on the guitar. Peter had his baby. Peter had his baby. Pastor Nancy was singing. Gowan was leading. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. That was. Uh, well, they knew it was a boy, and we don't have any information because she was in labor late this afternoon, and I had sent Peter a text. Uh, he had sent us a kind of a heads up, might not be there tomorrow night, baby. Baby seems to be on its way, and I sent him a text this afternoon. Any word on baby? And he's like, well, she's in labor right now. We're going to have a baby soon. I'm like, okay. What are you answering my text for then? <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. But anyway, I'm, we'll have a picture hopefully on, on Sunday, so we'll cool. have more info. But for sure we know it's a boy. Cool. You want to come closer, or are you going to stay way over there? Yeah, I'll come closer. All right, there we go. Oh, I don't have notes, though. Uh, I need notes. Oh, way over there. All right, welcome everybody. Glad to have you with us. And wow, what a what a team of singers and musicians. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. amen. All right, our subject tonight is the blessings of walking in the fear of the Lord. Um, I can't believe that any Christian would shrink back from this topic because it opens doors, opens avenues, it makes access. God is open all the time, twenty four seven. There's no shutdown in heaven. Uh, it's not just Sundays and Wednesdays, but heaven is open for each of us, and there's plenty of room for all aboard. So uh, the blessings of walking in the fear of the Lord. I just want to testify that uh, it's one of my favorite subjects, and so I will continually, till Jesus comes back, I will continue to talk about the fear of the Lord because it's blessed my life. It's helped me. It, it's, the, there's deliverance power in there. There's victory in there. There's hope in there. There's joy. There's peace. There's long suffering. There's gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. All the fruit of the Spirit are in walking in the fear of the Lord. And so a person can really step up to the plate, step up to, uh, take it to another level when you recognize and appreciate walking in the fear of the Lord. And there's blessings the blessings that come with walking in the fear of the Lord. All right, so we've got just probably almost all Proverbs and Psalms. There is one Isaiah, one Acts, but the rest of it is uh, in one Job, but, but pretty much Proverbs and Psalms. So let's get started. Proverbs 9.10 from the New King James. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So the beginning of wisdom, and I guess I would have to ask us to ask ourselves, do I walk in the fear of the Lord? Because I don't want to say I don't walk in wisdom. I want to say I walk in wisdom, therefore I need to acknowledge that I walk in the fear of the Lord. Pastor Nancy, you can jump in anytime you want. All right, so Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Our second verse is from Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord lengthens one's life. New Living Translation. Lengthening your life. Uh, you know, you, we, hey, people get bad reports all the time. And, you know, we don't want to, uh, we like to speak faith. We don't like to speak fear. 
And so we don't want to declare negativity. So we can declare something instead. And we can declare that the fear of the Lord will lengthen my life. If I've gotten a bad report, if I've been diagnosed, if I've been told that uh, my family or, or whatever it is, it's something is, is happening in my life. I can stand on God's word. We believe in the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ and the price he paid on the cross and the word of God to deliver us from any, any bad report, any negativity that has been spoken over our life, anything that our parents said to us when we were little kids. If you think that you have a shortened lifespan, here's a verse for you, that the fear of the Lord will lengthen your life, and, but the years of the wicked are cut short. Let's let them... Let's let them that don't walk in the fear of the Lord, that don't care about God, that don't care about his word, let them have their lives shortened, but let us have extended life because of the fear of the Lord. You know, I know people that God has lengthened their days. There's some of you sitting in this room that God has lengthened your days because the time wasn't the time to graduate to heaven was not there. And I can think of people over the years that should have died and God spared their life for a season. And in, in some of the people that I'm, that I'm thinking of that come to memory, they had an opportunity. God, God did some things. There was healing in their life. Now, maybe they still graduated to heaven, but there were things that got set right. And when I also see this, I think about it lengthens our life, our life worth living in God. There's opportunities for us to continue to serve God and to make a difference in the, in the kingdom. Why would God lengthen someone's life? It's not necessarily just so you can, you know, do whatever. He lengthens our life so we can finish our race, finish our course, do the things that God has for us that are vital in the kingdom of God. We need to change our perspective or open up our perspective sometimes, but it is a life worth living. Yeah, from a practical standpoint, hey, as a Christian, I'm no longer going to get whacked out on drugs. As a Christian, I'm not going to get get high on weed. As a Christian, I'm not going to smoke cigarettes. I'm not going to drink alcohol. I'm going to do, not do the things that the world does. I'm going to come out from among them and be separate. Now, some of you, uh, some churches will fight me over the right for some of that stuff. That's your business. That's your church, not mine. But in this church, we believe in clean living. We believe in deliverance and, and come out from out there and, and live a long life through healthy living, healthy eating, healthy choices, healthy words, healthy relationships. We want to walk in this health. And so the fear of the Lord lengthens one's life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. The King James says prolongs your days. And so I, I think in terms, in this context, as we've talked about life in, in length, but prolongs your days, the fear of the Lord offers a longer, healthier life, extra time, or time enough to get things done and to enjoy good days. You know, you need to use your faith, faith that I'm going to have a good day. You could start out and, and you, could, you could roll out of bed and stub your toe and go, oh, it's going to be a crummy day today. I was going to say a different word, but, but I didn't. But it's going to be a crummy day today. No, we're going to make choices. We're going to make good choices that today's going to be a good day even though I stub my toe. Today's going to be a good day even though I don't feel happy, even though I don't feel joyful, even though I don't feel like I want to want to have a good day. I'm going to have a good day because Christians should have good days every day in Christ is a good day. You can have one. I can have one. We're going to have one together in Jesus' name. So longer, let's see, uh, anything on that, Pastor Nance? Uh, time enough to get things done and enjoy good days. Proverbs 14, 27, again from the New Living Translation. The fear of the Lord is a life-giving fountain. It offers escape from the snares of death. Now, most of us, we aren't in situations but Pastor Nancy, did, I don't know if did everyone hear the testimony of where you guys were that day. Oh, you don't want to share online. Okay, so, but anyways, there was uh, some 
lots of police cars, lots of ambulances, and lots of negativity going on. And time-wise, Pastor Nancy avoided it all. So I'll keep that brief, keep well, it short. Well, that was Bob's testimony, too. He accidentally hit the neighbor's garbage can, was a good neighbor, cleaned it up, was a little delayed, and missed a really major accident just down the street from his house. So, Hey, everyone, this is another choice that we make is that we choose not to be afraid of death. Death has been removed from your life. When you accepted Christ, that eternal life came into your life, and now you choose life, and you no longer choose death. We make a choice in how we talk. We make a choice in what we do. We make a choice in how we live to choose life, to walk in the Spirit and to reject all death. We're, we're making, you know, I mean, nobody's perfect, obviously, but we're making these choices to try and stomp and stamp out death in our lives. And if, you know, many of us spoke death all the time. But now that we've come into the church, now that we're Christians, now that we know the Word of God, we know that uh, Solomon talked about words, Proverbs talks about words, Jesus talked about words. He said, whosoever shall say to the mountain. So we're saying to the mountain of death, be removed, be cast into the sea. We choose life, and we choose to have it more abundantly. Amen. Heaven is a win. For Christians, that's, I mean, the hope of glory Heaven is a win for every single person that gets to graduate. I think for some Christians, they'd just as soon go now <laughs> and escape. But you can't do that either because God has a plan for you. While there is breath in your body, you have a plan and a purpose, and you need to be about God's business. And if you are about God's business, you will enjoy your life because there's peace and fulfillment when you are doing the will of God. But for everybody else that has gone before us, or it's a win. When my dad graduated last year to heaven, of course it was sad. But I don't mourn his loss, number one, because I know 100% he went to heaven. It was a win for him. Christians do not suffer in death. Your spirit is with Jesus before anybody ever sees you take your last breath. That's just your physical body shutting down. Heaven's a win. Christians don't suffer in death. We should rejoice for our brothers and sisters that go. Of course, when people go too soon, that's, not, that's hard, right? There's a lot of stuff that we're just, our brains are on tilt and we don't always understand. But if you're here, you're here for such a time as this. You're called to the kingdom. So quit thinking about going to heaven early. There's no checking out early just because things aren't perfect. All right? When you think about when Proverbs was written, they didn't even have air conditioning. They didn't have any of the niceties and things that, that we have. Sometimes I just... I don't know, I just want to shake my head because in the overall scheme of life, we're not witnessing our loved ones being burned at the stake for their faith like they did mm -hmm. in, the, in the early church, right? We have a lot to be grateful for, a lot to be thankful for. It's a matter of perspective what you choose to think about and to be happy about. Absolutely. Uh, one of the, uh, King James says, fountain of life, and the definition of spring, a fountain, source of life, a source of joy. My brothers and sisters, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Of such, against such there is no law. And so we have a source of joy, yeah. but we need to cultivate that. We need to use our faith to believe it and to choose to, you know, all of us could have crabby days uh, regularly, but uh, we choose joy over crabbiness. We choose joy by 
faith we make the choice that uh, Christ has provided joy. He has given me, no, that's life. But anyways, joy, unspeakable and full of glory. So we're grateful to have joy. We're grateful to have a source of joy on the inside of us from our spirit, not from our feelings, not from our mind, but from our spirit. In our spirit is the fruit of the spirit, and therefore each of us has the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. We have it. You've got it. Let's celebrate that with the source of joy. All right, so uh, again, it says to escape from the, uh, to avoid or to be removed from or to turn aside from traps, lures, and snares. You know, I don't fear trouble anymore. Uh, The escapes of the snares of death, I, I don't, I'm not afraid anymore. There was a time when, you know, things used to go wrong. There was time when things went bad. There are times when things, uh, ungodly things would happen. But no longer am I worried. Uh, no longer am I fretful. No longer am I terrified. No longer am I upset that something bad is going to happen. Because we learned the secret of speaking the desired end result. And now we say something good is about to happen to me. And it's based on the scripture. Pardon me? It is happening. Okay, good. Pastor Nancy says, is happening. Go ahead. But we don't have to live in fear. We don't have to live in fear. That's it. Okay. (laughs) The joy of the Lord is my strength. Fear of life makes me weak. So I want to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. We won't go there. All right. So Proverbs 22, 4. True humility and the fear of the Lord lead to riches. Hey, are you ashamed to say the word riches? Everybody say riches. Riches. riches is good. Heaven's full of golden streets. To me, that's riches. Riches of life. Riches of abundance. Riches of more than you could ever need is wealth and, and, and the prosperity. So riches here is prosperity. So we see that true humility for the Lord lead to riches and honor and a long life. Things can change for you. You might have always been on the bottom rung. You might have always been struggling. You might have always been accepting negativity that didn't belong to you. But as a Christian, based on Scripture, based on Scripture, not based on something I say or she says, but based on the Scripture, the Holy Bible, the Word of the living God, we can prosper. The Bible says to prosper and be in health even as our souls prosper. So your soul needs to prosper, and along with it will come the other things. As we pursue God, we, we, just, we just choose not to reject them and not to curse or speak against them. You know, when you are walking in the fear of the Lord, your focus isn't on necessarily... Yeah, that's a the, bad motive. The, right, the blessings. That's a it's, bad motive. Your focus is on the fear of the Lord, which is humility. And when you're humble, you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's the beginning of wisdom. And so the the Holy Spirit is always going to lead you to the right situations, around the right people. You're going to find yourself in the right place at the right time. Now, you're going to have to do something with with the leading of the Lord. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. But if you're humble and you're walking in the fear of the Lord, which your attention is on, I'm going to do what's right in God's sight, not live or operate in the realm of the fear of man, then those things are are byproducts. But I also like that, you know, uh, you can escape the snares of death. I trust in the supernatural protection of God. Now, when I have a check about something, I back myself up and remove myself out of situations. Hearing the voice of the good shepherd and the voice of a stranger, you're not following. Right. You recognizing the difference. Brothers and sisters, everyone needs to recognize the difference, and it just takes diligence. It takes stick to to stay in the word, to learn to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. You will, we all will. I know most of you do, but if there's a young Christian or new Christian or somebody who really hasn't ever practiced it, 
practicing learning to hear the voice of God rather than the voice of the enemy. The voice of the enemy, the Bible talks about it in, in Corinthians, that the voice of the enemy is out there. It's everywhere. But man, the still small voice, the inner witness, the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside will lead and guide you and talk to you. The Bible promises it. Amen. All right, so talking here about riches, prosperity, and honor, honor is being blessed by God. God honors people. Hallelujah. Uh, respected by people. Being respected by people is honor. Hallelujah. That's something good that comes from the Lord. Longevity is long life. Life, I put down green. Green is being fruitful. If you've got plants that are not green, they're not doing very good. You need to change something. But if you've got green plants, they're doing good, and green is fruitful, productive, and blessed. Hallelujah. So I put that in there. Amen. So God wants this for you. It's not a continual walk of misery. It's not a continual being bummed out. It's not always having to, you know, uh, just barely, barely get over. But God wants to bring you over, and we believe in prospering and being in health even as our souls prosper. That is in the book of Little John. Amen. But everything is cause and effect. The Bible's full of if-then statements. And so it's not just you do one little thing over here and then it, there's, there's foundational truths that all have to work together. And the fear of the Lord is one of those foundational truths, walking in humility and honoring God above everything else means that you also then honor God's word in its entirety above all else and that you're willing to submit to the authority of God's word whether you like it or not or whether it's convenient or not. So I think sometimes go people you can hear in their brain they're like, well, there's a disconnect because I I'm not seeing some of this stuff, or I know so and so, and they sure have the appearance of being a really good Christian, and they got all sorts of stuff going on in their life. Well, first of all, you don't live in somebody else's shoes; you live in your own shoes. So inspect your own life first, right? If there are things missing, then the wisdom of God will help you to put the pieces of the puzzle together so that this whole picture does become truth in your life. Amen. All right, Proverbs 19:23 from the New English Translation. Fearing the Lord leads to life, and the one who does so will live satisfied. He will not be afflicted by calamity. There's two things that have to be commented on. Uh, Satisfied is the next sentence, so he will not be afflicted by calamity. That is the word of God right there. If a person is just n nervous continually about being afflicted by calamity, you need to take this verse, make it your own, and say, hey, I believe that I can live satisfied and that I will not be afflicted by calamity. Does life go perfect for everyone? No. Hey, life doesn't go perfect for us all the time, but we believe and thank God for our teachers that taught us to quit saying what we don't want and start saying what you do want. I want what the Word says, and the Word says that fearing God will lead to, to life and, and uh, the one who does will live satisfied. It's good to be satisfied. It's good to be, have satisfaction. Satisfaction is peace in your heart Amen. because you know, man, no matter what happens, I belong to the Lord. I know where I'm going. Even if anything bad should happen to me, I know where I'm going when I die. Amen. All right, so satisfied, full, in a pleasant sense, it tends to life. Satisfied, living, alive, flowing, fresh, water, lively, active. These are all words that come with the definition of that word from the Bible. Green, a vegetation. Satisfied means your life is green rather than brown. Brown is not healthy. Green is lush and healthy. We want our brothers and sisters to have that life and have it green and lush. Amen. We can be satisfied. Someone just needs to change their attitude right now and say, I can be satisfied in this life, my lot in life. God has favor for me. God has victory for me. God has the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, good something good is about to happen to me. And I want us to change from negativity and naysaying 
into believing what the Word of God said. It's called faith in God's Word. Can and I so, share a quick testimony about that? When I first met Pastor Steve a long time ago, he was working at uh, Unisys, maybe? Seagate. Or Seagate. And where was the place where you had to be locked in a vault? All Seagate. right, so he believed God for this really good job. And he got this really good job, and he was all excited, and he shows up for work, and they locked him in a vault by himself. It was top secret stuff. Um, so they would open up. I had to get a top secret clearance. So they, yeah, so they he, scoured my life. So they open up one locked door. Then they open up another locked door. And then they lock the doors behind him as he goes in there. And then he'd have to take the computer out of the, that was back in the day when they had big old clunky computers, had to take it out of a locked cabinet inside this like massively locked yeah. room, hook it up. And then it was really slow, but it was miserable if he needed to use the restroom or take a break. He had to call somebody on the outside because he couldn't get out by himself. He was locked in. How many of you would like to be locked in a vault by yourself, no windows or anything, whatever? So he was just having a cow, right? You were not happy. God, you said you gave me this job. Okay, they're paying me more money, but locking me in a vault. All of a sudden, he changed his perspective. The blessings of the Lord will make you rich and you'll add no sorrow with it. And he changed his confession and he changed his perspective. And all of a sudden it occurred to him, hey, this processor is really slow. Do you think that I could bring a book in here and read while I'm in here? He got paid a lot of money to sit in that vault and he'd make his little connections, whatever. And while it's waiting, he studied the Bible for hours by himself, uninterrupted. Right? Studied the word all day. Sometimes you need to change your perspective so you can see the big, fat blessing that is right in front of you. But because it gets delivered in a way that maybe you didn't expect or you didn't like, you don't think it's a blessing. And so you're cursing with your mouth the very blessing that God gave you. Does that make sense? Then they brought an old Catholic Christian in, and we sat and we discussed the Bible for hours while we waited. His machine was slow. My machine was slow. It was amazing. We had the greatest time <laughs> studying amazing. studying the Word of God and having Bible study all day at the, and they got, at the government's expense. And they got paid really well to do it. So there you go. And I'm, I'm grateful for every minute of it, too. All right, so we can be satisfied. God has your back. Let's say, God has my back. God has my back. Hey, someone needs to know that God's got your back. Yeah. Hey, the scripture calls says God will be my rear guard. He'll watch my back. I don't have to keep looking over my shoulder. Uh, God has your back when you walk in the fear of the Lord. You won't be visited with evil. There's no need to fear bad things happening. Stop fearing bad things happening. Stop fearing that something's going to break, that something's going to fail, or something's going to go wrong. He has your back. Well, things have to change. And it's sometimes it changes. It has to change when you declare that life is good, life is blessed, and God is on my side and he's got my back. Well, when I start saying that regularly, rather than, oh, I wonder what's going to break, I wonder what's going to fail, I wonder what's going to go wrong. Rather than saying any of that, I'm saying God's got my back I'm a blessing waiting to happen. Something good is about to happen to Faith me. Faith works in the negative and the positive. A lot of people and a lot of Christians are using their faith, their belief, that something negative is going to happen. And you know how you can tell? Because what's coming out of their mouth. And they're saying it all the time. And then they're experiencing it. And they're like, see, see. See? No. Say, say, say. You're using your faith. There's a connection with your mouth to your heart and what you believe on the inside of you. And so in order to change that, as crazy as some of this truth might sound, if you've been taught lies your entire life or believe the lies or whatever, there's still lies. You got to start speaking the truth. 
When fear tries to come on you, speak truth. God's not given me a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I'm not walking in fear. God, I thank you. I, when I get up in the morning, when I'm driving to work in the morning, I'm, I'm praying. I'm speaking out scriptures over my life that declare God's will for my life. Amen. So I'm setting my day up so that even if crazy stuff happens in my day, and I work in commercial construction, so crazy stuff goes wrong all the time. Every time I turn around, and i got to solve a lot of problems, so every time I turn around, my phone's ringing, different things. But it doesn't change the fact that the joy of the Lord is my strength. God gives me wisdom when I need it, and he helps, right? So I'm not going to speak all that negativity. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. <laughs> Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in their heart, but believe that the things that they say will come to pass, they shall have whatsoever they say. Jesus said that. Is that universal? Of course it's universal, but it's also earthly. He said that to you and I, that we could speak to the mountain and command it to be moved. Have I ever moved a mountain? No. Have I ever moved a tree? No. Have I ever moved a boulder? No. But I still speak to things because I believe that God has given us the authority yeah, and the power. you mountains in your life. Yes, you've mountains. Of, boulders okay, but, in your life. Yes, definitely, but all not. all sorts of stuff. Okay, yes, thank you. All right, I correct my confession here to agree with you about what you just said. That's true. Great mountains have moved in our lives through faith in the Word of God. And so I'll move off of that one. <laughs> but amen. All right, so uh, we need a whole page here to get to. All right, we'll hurry it up. Proverbs 14, 26. This is, again, new living. Those who fear the Lord are secure. That is your answer for security right. for any person that is a little bit nervous. You can have security. The, those right. who fear the Lord are secure. He will be a refuge for their children. If you're worried about your children, pray these, these yeah. verses. Stand on the Word of God. Amen. The King James says they'll have confidence and refuge. Confidence, refuge, strength, strong, power, might, boldness. All these words, when we do the research, provide strength for these things in our lives. In Isaiah 33, 6 from the New English Translation, He is your constant source of stability. Mm -hmm. There's someone that needs to know that you, no matter what a doctor has said or a doctor has prescribed, you can have a life of stability, but you're going to have to do it God's way yeah. because if you do it the world's way, they'll give you more drugs. They'll just fire you up and send you away. So, but we want to do it God's way, and that is He is our source of stability. He abundantly provides safety and great wisdom. He gives all this to those who fear Him. Back to the fear of the Lord. You want this, then walk in the fear of the Lord. Stability in the days we live in, despite the current events in this world, where even the weather's weird or the news is weird, Stability in this world based on our relationship with Jesus Christ regardless of circumstances. That's one of the things Jesus taught over and over. Circumstances must bow their knee to the name of Jesus and to the Word of God. Amen. All right, on the back page, we'll, we'll try and... Oh, we got some time here. Stability is defined as constancy of character, purpose, constancy of purpose, steadfastness, the state or quality of being stable. I'm talking to someone that they may look very strong outwardly, but you're a little concerned about your stability inwardly. These things provide that inner strength. We can grow past that point of dependence. We can grow past dependence on the Lord. We never grow past. But dependence on anything or anyone else in this world besides the Lord and His Word. We can grow in these things by being doers of the Word and putting these things in our mouth. So Purpose. I'll tell you, this is what you do if, if you need stability. God, you're my constant source of stability. You take the Scripture and you say it over yourself back to God. And you say it over yourself, back to God. You abundantly provide safety for me and great wisdom. You give this to those who fear you. God, I fear you and I honor you. 
So I thank you that you are my constant source of stability. And every time you're tempted to think instability or some of these things, I have constancy of character. You can take the definitions and pray those too. I have constancy of character. <laughs> I agree. I have constancy of purpose. I'm steadfast. I'm stable. I'm not going to deteriorate, <laughs> and I'm not going to be displaced. Oh. That's how you do it, okay? That's, that's what we do. We find scriptures that speak to us and speak to a situation, and then we insert ourselves in those scriptures, and we say them out loud back to God. And every time a lie thought comes, pops into your brain, or some well-meaning Christian comes along your path and says, oh, that's not really for you, ha! It's called standing on the word. Find a scripture. If it speaks to your heart, it belongs to you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the rhema word of God. Spoken. That's what rhema means, spoken. God spoke the world into existence, and it was. Okay? We are created in God's image. If God spoke things creatively, the power of God was released when he spoke it. The power of God is released when we speak his word. And what that does is it, it changes the wheels that have been put in motion going in the wrong direction, and it gets the wheels going in the right direction. And we've lived through all sorts of trials and tests and tribulations, and we've done the exact same thing every single time. Why? Because it works. This is what works. Because it's the Bible. Amen. And it's the truth. Hey, Job's one of the oldest books in the Bible, and Job said the fear of the Lord is true wisdom, and to forsake evil is real understanding. Yeah. I mean, that goes way, it, it's, it's eternal. King David said the commands to fear the Lord are right and endure forever. The judgments given by the Lord are trustworthy and absolutely just. These are not just, this is not information. This is the word of God. This is the power of God. All, the, all these words have God's power infused in them. They're supernatural seeds to our need. So rather than take this as information, if you take this as information, you failed the test today. This is the power of God. And we want everyone, and, and I, I'm amplifying that because I know that people struggle. I know that people have, the enemy plays mind games. I know that some people are afraid. But when you substitute the Word of God in place of the voices, the millions of voices that are out there, things change. Things get better. Your life is different. God's Word is truth. Amen. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. I just feel like that's a key for someone who needs an answer to something but they've been hanging on to they've been hanging on to something that they know God has been pinging them to let go of forsaking evil forsaking evil if there's something that you know you need to stop doing stop looking at stop whatever because it's evil for you it doesn't matter if 50,000 other Christians around you are doing that, playing that, listening to that, or whatever. If it's evil for you and God is telling you it's evil for you, it's evil for you. So forsake the evil and boom, understanding will come. Sometimes people don't get the fact that you could believe you need understanding in this situation over here. But your obedience to forsake the evil over here, they're tied together. They're tied together. And this scripture, this scripture, forsake evil is real understanding. Amen. Psalm 111, verse 10, NLT. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commands will grow in wisdom. Praise him forever. That's the psalmist. Jesus Christ walked in the fear of the Lord. In Isaiah, the prophecies of Jesus Christ in 11, 2 and 3 out of the amp, Amplified, the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and strength, the Spirit of knowledge and of reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. Verse 3, he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what he see, his eyes see, 
nor make decisions by what his ears hear. So if, if the Lord did it, you and I, there's no excuses for us but to walk in the fear of the Lord. And, you know, I'm not binding that to you. I'm praying that for you. I'm speaking that for you because we're not trying to make you do anything. Obviously, you're going to do what you want to do. But we have learned in our, well, it's been 40, going on almost 50 years of Christianity. And we've learned. And, you know, we, faith works. We believe it. And so we want to share that with you. One step at a time. Right? One step at a time. As you're praying, as you're listening to the message tonight, whatever, something pops into your heart, that's the change. Just make the adjustment. We're not asking you to do everything that we do, you know. We're not asking you to do what everybody else does. We're just asking you to do what God is leading you to do through Scripture and having the truth before you. And, you know, the people that really grab hold of Scripture and grab hold of these truths, their lives change very quickly. But for some people, it's a slower process. But you know what? If you're moving forward, you're still moving forward. Slow process, slow progress is better than no progress. So don't be discouraged. It's meant to encourage you. We're living in such evil days. It's so around us in so many different ways. And this tells us that, you know what, the fear of the Lord, it'll help us. It'll help keep us out of trouble. It'll help keep our families out of trouble. It'll help us in so many ways. We don't have to be affected like other people. Let me piggyback off of that point yeah. and we'll close. Yeah. This says that the early church walked in the fear of the Lord. That's a comment that troubles my heart. I wrote it. It troubles my heart because if the early church walked in the fear of the Lord, and you walk into a church in these days now, man, you need to gauge that. Is this church and these believers and this pastor walking in the fear of the Lord? I'm not judging any other church, but I'm saying you need to evaluate it. Are we walking in the fear of the Lord? This says the churches throughout Judea, Galilee, Samaria had peace and were edified. Walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. A church should be walking in the fear of the Lord. If anything goes in one of the churches in this locale, man, you need to challenge yourself as to whether or not you're in the right place because every church is on the earth to teach you the fear of the Lord. Otherwise, it's just a, uh, a bless me club or a, a social gathering or just a party. We want to teach and preach the fear of the Lord. Lastly, we'll skip my commentary there. We'll get to Proverbs 23, 17 from the Amplified Bible. Do not let your heart envy sinners who live godless lives and have no hope of salvation. That's pretty bold. Who live godless lives and have no hope of salvation. Amplified said that. I didn't but continue to live in a reverent, worshipful fear of the Lord day by day. It's, it's so important right now that we live in the fear of the Lord. So in, within our, our salvation prayer, we always offer it with the avenue of repentance. And repentance isn't getting, just getting saved. It's continually challenging yourself to acknowledge and evaluate your life. And if your life isn't right, then you ask God's forgiveness and you make the adjustments with his strength, his power, and his will and his word. And so we say the salvation prayer within that. You can get right with God right now. And we invite anyone watching and anybody here with us to say the salvation prayer. Let's say, dear God in heaven, dear God in heaven I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that he died on the cross for me. And was raised again from the dead. So that, I could have life. so that I could have eternal life. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Be, my Savior. be my Savior and be my Lord. And be my Lord. I, ask you to me of my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. 
I receive your forgiveness now. I receive your forgiveness now. I receive eternal life. I receive eternal life. And I thank and praise you for it. And I thank and praise you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're believing people are getting right all the time. We're believing you at home are getting right with God. Hey, we're going on to glory from faith to faith, victory to victory, glory to glory. And time is short. I, I, there are, I have good solid Bible-believing friends that don't agree with me as far as time, but I think time is short. And if I'm right, then some people are in trouble. And if I'm not right, then I'll just stay longer. Amen. But anyways... What would uh, be wrong with living like Jesus is coming back tomorrow anyway? We should just live ready, right? Wouldn't that be the right way to live? Because that's pretty much what the Bible tells us. You are right on. I don't know. I'm just over some of these excuses. Absolutely. All right. All right. So lastly today, we just want to encourage and thank those of you that are sharing your resources with this church. We know that there are people out there that are watching that have been sending in offerings and gifts and tithes, and thank you for that. And for those of you in the church that believe this is your church home, you bring your tithes, your offerings, your gifts, however you choose to do that. Many people believe it. Many believe in tithing. Many believe in gifts. Others believe in offerings. But whatever it is, we receive it and we honor God with it, we choose to continue this ministry with the tithes, the gifts, and the offerings of the faithful people who support this church. Father, we thank you for the tithes, the offerings, and gifts that come into our church. Thank you for those that are out there and send offerings in, and for those that are here that bring their tithes, gifts, and offerings into the storehouse, that there might be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there's not enough room to receive it, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Your vines will not cast their fruit before their time in the fields, and whatsoever they put their hands to will prosper. We're believing that for those out there and for those in here, that something good is going to happen to them because good things are happening in this church. We declare that by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Zoom Bible study tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. The link will be posted on Facebook, and then Saturday Revelation class, and then we're going to... Uh, go out on the streets for a little bit after and just talk to people and share the gospel. So you're welcome to join us on Saturday. Gowan's got some interesting things to share with us on Saturday morning, so we're looking All forward right. to that. Go okay. Praise God. Good we'll night. have a good Thank night. Thank you for joining Bless us. You.